Good morning. It is Sunday morning, January 17th, the second Sunday of Epiphany. In our gospel lesson this day, we hear the story of the calling of Nathaniel. And initially, Nathaniel dismisses the idea that Jesus could be the Messiah because he comes from Nazareth. But he later discovers that where we come from isn't important, but rather it is to know that where we are is important, especially when where we are is with Jesus, who reveals himself to be the very Son of God. I invite you to prepare yourselves for worship this day as we share together the order for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God. Holy God, you search us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins, and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone. Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. How vast is God's grace. Through the power and promise of Christ Jesus, our sins are washed away, and we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. We are called to be the beloved community, living out Christ's justice and the Spirit's reconciling peace. Amen. I invite you to join in singing the opening hymn for this day, This Little Light of Mine.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, most merciful Redeemer, for the countless blessings and benefits you give. May we know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day praising you with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel for this day is the Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. And Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses and the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph, from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, we are in the season of Epiphany. Last Sunday, actually, in, when we celebrated the baptism of Jesus, we were celebrating really the beginning of the season of Epiphany. And the word Epiphany literally means a, a revealing of something that has been hidden. So in the baptismal scene, uh, the, the voice from heaven, you know, the, the cloud says, This is my Son, my beloved, in whom I'm well pleased. And the Spirit, in the form of a dove, rests on Jesus, revealing that Jesus is the very Son of God. And so he begins his ministry, Jesus does, uh, and, and he continues to reveal to all who are around him what it means that he is the Son of God. And in our Gospel lesson today, of course, he, he, he reveals uh, to, to Nathaniel. That's what the word epiphany means, a, re a revelation of something you didn't know. I remember there was a movie uh, uh, quite a while, long time ago. It was a movie about Peter Pan starring Dustin Hoffman. That movie is uh, still on reruns, I'm sure. But it, it, there's a scene in the movie that, that sticks with me, and it's where Dustin Hoffman, who is, who is Captain Hook, is, is frustrated because he can't seem to get the best of Peter Pan. How can he, how can he get, a, get the best of Peter Pan? And he's thinking and thinking, and then, and then suddenly he stops and he says, I just had an apostrophe. <laughs> Of course, he meant an epiphany. Lightning has just struck my brain, he says. Because he thought that he, he had this idea of how he could finally uh, get a, the best of Peter Pan. When I was uh, my first year at Concordia College in Milwaukee, that's a long time ago, started there in 1971, uh, I had to get a job. And uh, so... Uh, in order to help pay some expenses. So I got a part-time job working in the uh, offices, the business office, doing computer uh, uh, key punching. And um, what ended up happening is I, I would go in in the afternoon uh, from like four to six. I'd, I'd start at four o'clock and I'd work until dinner and then that, just a couple hours a day every day. And when I would go in to do the key punching, there was a, 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 a gal there, a young gal who, um, um, was just, she worked full time, she wasn't a student, she was working in the business office, and she would bring me the stack of work that I was supposed to do. And she was a pretty good looking young gal. And uh, every day she would come in and bring me the stuff and tell me, okay, here's what you need to do today. And I would, 
I would get it done as best I could, and that would go on and on and on. And, and um, I got to know her a little bit, and I even thought a few times about the possibility of asking her out on a date. You know, about the same age. Um, but uh, it took me a while. I started uh, at the college working in the office. I started there in um, September. And it wasn't until later that next year, in I think June or July, that I finally got around. I finally uh, got up the nerve to ask her out. And, and I would talk to some of my roommates about you know, my thinking. I was thinking I, that I might want to ask her out on a date. And they said, well, why don't you? What's the worst thing could happen? And she says, no. And I said, yeah, I know that is the worst thing that could happen. Because I, I kept thinking, you know, that I'm working there in that office. And if I ask her out on a date and she said no, well, that would make things a little uncomfortable every day still going in and working in the office. Um, but one day, I, uh, I had an epiphany, you might say. Lightning struck my brain and I thought, you know, I'm going to ask her out on a date. You know, and I, so I took, picked up the phone and I, I had uh, looked up her phone number, got a hold of that, and I called her up. And I was pretty sure that um, she was going to say no, but I decided I'm going to do it anyway. And uh, she, I asked for her, she came to the phone, and, and I said, this is Roland from um, the college office. She said, yeah. And I, I said, I was just calling to see if maybe you would be interested in going out on a date with me sometime. She said, oh, well, sure, she said, when? Well, that caught me off guard, because I, I thought for sure she was going to say no. I hadn't even thought about what kind of date I might be asking her out. So when she said, sure, I, I, I grabbed the newspaper, happened to be close by, and I quick scrambled and opened up to the, to the page that has the, the movies showing. And I said, well, how about we go to a movie? And there was a big ad for a movie in the paper then, in the summer of 1972. It was uh, Fiddler on the Roof. And I said, how about we go see Fiddler on the Roof? And she said, okay, when? And I said, how about Saturday? Great. So we agreed. I would pick her up and we'd go see the movie Fiddler on the Roof. That's how, that's how we ended up going out on our first date. Now, if you remember the movie Fiddler on the Roof, uh, you know, it's a pretty old movie, <laughs> obviously. Um, but it's, it begins, actually, the movie begins with uh, a fiddler, someone playing a violin, standing on top of a roof, balancing on a roof and playing the fiddle, you know, dun, da, da, dun, dun, da, 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 dun, dun. and then uh, one, the main character in the movie, Tevier, uh, who has in the movie three daughters and a wife, Tevier uh, explains why there's a fiddler on the roof. Kind of crazy, he says, isn't it? A fiddler on the roof. What's he doing up there? And he says, well, in this little village of Tevka, he says, uh, you might say we are all fiddlers on a roof, trying to, you know, uh, squeak out a pleasant and happy tune without breaking our necks. It's not easy, he says. Well, why, why take the risk? You, why, why stay up on the roof if it's so dangerous? And I would answer that question, Tevye says, with, with one word. Tradition tradition. And I remembered, you know, that movie, of course, because it was our first date, but I remember uh, the point he's making about how powerful traditions can be in keeping us from doing things that we might otherwise not, rather not choose to do, you know, because we're afraid of breaking tradition. We, we uh, all of us, I think, are, are kind of in a place where we, where we like to do things where, that make us feel safe and comfortable and not go too far off the edge in any one direction. You know, just stay on the roof and play our pleasant tunes, so to speak. In our gospel lesson, uh, Nathaniel and Philip and, and pretty much all of the Jewish people in, in those days were very big on tradition. 
you know, sticking to tradition, what they knew and understood and what made sense to them. And so when Philip comes to Nathanael and says, we found the one, the Messiah, the one whom Moses and the prophets have written about, it's Jesus of Nazareth. When, when Nathanael hears that, he's thinking, wait a minute. There's nowhere in the Old Testament, nowhere in, in Moses or in the prophets that says the Messiah, the one that God promised to send, is going to come from Nazareth. And Nathanael knows that, that the, the Messiah is supposed to be a descendant of, of King David, and he would be born in Bethlehem, not in, in Nazareth. What, possibly, what good could possibly come from Nazareth? And... And Philip says, come and see, come and see. You know, when, when I was talking to my roommates about possibly the idea of, of, of asking Bonnie on a date, they said, do it, take the risk, you know, what could it hurt? I said, well, it could, you know, it might th make things difficult. Ah, but eventually I said, well, why not? Give it a try, see what happens. And so Nathaniel follows Philip and and, and Nathaniel is approaching Jesus, says, I know you. You are a true Israelite without guile. And Philip says, how do you know me? And he says, well, I saw you sitting underneath the fig tree. And in that moment, that's when, for Nathaniel, he has his epiphany. Lightning strikes his brain and he says to Jesus, you are the Son of God. The chosen one has come to save us. And Jesus tells Nathanael, you think that's something? Nathanael, you're going to see greater things than these. And of course, the greater things that Jesus is referring to are all the miracles that he's going to be performing as Nathanael and the other disciples follow him. All the miracles and, and, and all the parables that he tells and, and the words that he speaks that continue to reveal to reveal who God, not just who Jesus is, but who God is. A God who loves us so much that he sent his son to be born. A God who desires not to judge and condemn us, but who desires more than anything else to, to love us and to forgive us and to claim us as his own. Greater things than these. Well, over the years, after that first date that Bonnie and I have, uh, um, we have discovered many, many, many greater things that have been made possible for, for us as, as individuals and as a couple together because we took a risk. I took a risk in that moment to, to, to see what would happen if I just asked, if I stepped out of my comfort zone for just a little bit, took the risk to come and see for myself whether or not this might be the one for me. In the same way God calls us, as he called Nathaniel and Philip and all his disciples, he calls us to take a risk, to come and see for ourselves in our relationship with God. What's possible? Instead of being fearful, you know, and, and choosing not to do something because we're afraid it might lead to some discomfort or might end up in the wrong way, instead of, uh, you know, making choices because of fear, being led by fear, God calls us to be led by faith in his unconditional love for us. And he calls us into this new relationship that is made possible because the one who is born for us, Jesus, then goes to the cross. And, and then having died on the cross to forgive our sins, God raised him from the dead so that we might know that the greatest thing of all is possible. That not even death can separate us from his love. Come and see, God says to us today. Don't allow fear to keep us from, from looking for opportunities to, to enter into a new relationship with God as children who are loved and forgiven no matter what. And to join him in the work of his kingdom by sharing that same love and, and forgiveness with other people to the best of our abilities day by day. I took a risk and asked Bonnie out on a date and we went to see Fiddler on the Roof and, 
and wonder of wonders, miracles of miracles, nothing has ever been the same for either of us since. And we continue to give thanks to God for the opportunity we have to have been able to share our lives together as his children, seeking out in our relationship ways that we can, we can reveal to other people something of the relationship that God chooses to have with us. A relationship that is based upon unconditional love and grace and mercy and forgiveness always. Amen. Now may the peace of God which passes understanding keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. I invite you to join in singing the hymn of the day for this day, Will You Come and Follow Me?
I invite you now to join in confessing your faith as we share together the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and for all people in need. For the body of Christ gathered throughout the world, for all servants of the gospel, that following Jesus, the church lives out its calling every day, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For the well-being of creation, for plants and animals, and for all that God has marvelously made, that we serve as wise stewards of earth, our home. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For police officers and firefighters, for attorneys and paralegals, for peacekeepers and military personnel, for the leaders of governments, that they provide protection to all people, especially the most vulnerable, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For those lacking food or shelter, for those who are sick or grieving, and for those who are imprisoned or homebound, especially those whom we hold in our hearts, that God console all who suffer, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. In thanksgiving for the saints who have gone before us, that their lives give us a vision of the gospel in action, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, who has also taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to join in singing the closing hymn for this day, Here I Am, Lord.
God the Creator strengthen you, Jesus the Beloved fill you, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter keep you in peace. Amen. Go in peace. Be the light of Christ. Thanks be to God. You believe because I saw you Resting under the fig tree Jesus called that disciple an Israelite Indeed, you will see greater things than